the Mesozoic era is often referred to as the Age of Reptiles, and for pretty good reason. The archosaurs, or ruling reptiles, dominated ecosystems from the Triassic all the way through to the Cretaceous, while mammals stayed mainly in their shadows. Most famous of the archosaurs are, of course, the dinosaurs, best known from huge, charismatic animals such as Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Triceratops. But those were all Jurassic or Cretaceous dinosaurs. The earliest dinosaurs started much more humbly as small, long-legged, and probably bipedal animals. So how did these famous and well-loved creatures rise to prominence from such modest beginnings in the Triassic? The Triassic opened 250 million years ago on an apocalyptic landscape off the back of the Permian-Triassic extinction, the most devastating extinction in the history of life. With over 90% of species having vanished as a result of the extinction, the survivors were free to diversify into all kinds of weird and wonderful forms, such as herbivorous rhynchosaurs, reptiles with beaks and unusual teeth, the tree-climbing drapanosaurs with a strange mishmash of features, and ichthyosaurs, which, despite looking like a fish or a dolphin, were actually reptiles. One group that did particularly well in the Triassic were the archosaurs, and despite the group's past anatomical diversity, Today, the archosaurs are represented only by birds and crocodiles. The two broadest divisions of archosaurs are the Pseudosuchians, which contain crocodiles and their relatives, and the Ornithodira, which contain birds and their closest relatives, including the dinosaurs. Pseudosuchia seemed to dominate at first, while Ornithodira remained largely in the background, and true dinosaurs didn't even appear until 20 million years into the Triassic. That changed in the late Triassic, when the dinosaurs began the first of their expansive radiations, and the Pseudosuchians seemed to decline. After the end of the Triassic, which featured another mass extinction, only the crocodile lineage, called crocodilomorphs, remained of the Pseudosuchians, whereas dinosaurs went on to diversify into some of the most iconic animals to ever walk the Earth. But we want to know what happened to cause this turnover of Archosaurian dominance. It's possible that just by chance the Pseudosuchians were much more affected by the severe climate change at the end of the Triassic. There was, after all, a lot of environmental upheaval during this time, with drastic changes in humidity and floral compositions of ecosystems. And at the end of the period, it's likely that massive volcanic eruptions ultimately led to the extinction event that claimed many of the Pseudosuchians. But it's also very likely that the Pseudosuchians' collapse in diversity was in part caused by the rise of dinosaurs. A number of ways in which the dinosaurs could have contributed to the demise of their Pseudosuchian rivals has been proposed across the years. Maybe the dinosaurs, with their more bird-like system of air sacs, could breathe more efficiently, and this helped them survive. Maybe the fact that they grew faster were warm-blooded helped. Maybe it was something to do with the way that they moved. It could have even been a combination of two or more of these factors that helped them thrive. Today, the Dawn Dinos team is focusing on testing the locomotor superiority hypothesis, which proposes that the dinosaurs were better at walking, running, and perhaps even jumping than other archosaurs were. And perhaps this is what gave them an edge and allowed them to diversify in the late Triassic, and not only survive, but thrive after the Triassic-Jurassic extinctions. But this hypothesis is not new. And over the course of the next four videos, we will investigate some of the key players in bringing this hypothesis to where it is today, whether they agree with the locomotor superiority hypothesis or not. We hope you will join us, and if you want any more information about the locomotor superiority hypothesis or the Dawn Dinos project, then please visit our website, which will be linked below. We would also like to thank the European Research Council for funding this project. 